Hi, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to Ham Whisperer and Lesson 7 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam preparation. In this lesson will cover the T2A questions from the question pool. This covers operating procedures. Now, though there's only one question will probably be on the exam from this section, uh, this is important stuff to know just in general amateur radio practice. So, let's get started. All right, the T2A section covers station operation, choosing operating frequency, calling another station, test transmissions, use of minimum power, frequency use, and band plans. What is the most common repeater frequency offset in a two meter band? Now we've talked about repeaters before. Essentially, they take your signal from one frequency and retransmit it on another. The difference between the receive and transmit frequencies is called an offset. Now, most two meter repeaters have the same offset, however, they can change occasionally, but for the most part, they're usually the same. The answer is plus or minus 600 kilohertz. And be sure to remember the plus or minus. The offset can be higher than the receiving frequency or it can be lower than the receiving frequency. So, plus or minus 600 kilohertz. What is the national calling frequency for FM simplex operations in the 70 centimeter band? Now the answer for this for FM simplex on 70 centimeters is 446 megahertz. Now simplex simply means that you are transmitting and receiving on the same frequency as opposed to repeater which receives and transmits with an offset. Some bands have special calling frequencies based on the mode. Now calling frequency is the way I've used it is I am trying to find an amateur who's listening on 70 centimeters. I'll give his call sign. If he responds we talk about a different frequency to shift to to have our conversation. Try to keep the calling frequencies clear just for calling, but for the answer to this question, you just have to memorize it. The 70 centimeters FM simplex calling frequency is 446 megahertz. What is a common repeater frequency offset in the 70 centimeter band? All right, same type of question as a two meter repeater offset. You just have to remember that for 70 centimeters, it is plus or minus five megahertz. Of all the possible answers on the, correct, on the exam, the correct one is the only one that doesn't have 600 kilohertz in it. Remember, 600 kilohertz is for 2 meters, 70 centimeters is 5 megahertz. What is an appropriate way to call another station on a repeater if you know the station's call sign? Well, if you know who you're looking for on any band or frequency, all you really have to do is give the call sign of the ham you're calling followed by your own call sign. So, for instance, uh, if I was looking for KA1YQA, I would say KA1YQA, this is KE4GKP. Just keep it simple. Essential all you're doing is saying, hey you, it's me, but with a ham twist. How should you respond to a station calling CQ? The answer is transmit the other station's call sign followed by your call sign. A CQ is what they call a Q signal or, or code, which means calling any station. So CQ means calling any station. So when you send out a series of CQs, you're looking for somebody basically to talk to, so or, or to send traffic to. So for instance, if I wanted, to, if I got on the air and I wanted to talk to another station, I would call CQ, 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 CQ. This is KE4GKP calling CQ and standing by. Now, when another ham hears that CQ, they can respond by going, by basically providing my call sign, so KE4GKP, and then their call sign, so in this case KA1YQA. So KE4GKP is calling CQ or calling any amateur. KA1YQA answers with KE4GKP, this is KE1YQA. And then you can deliver your traffic. So transmit the other station's call sign followed by your own is the proper way to answer a CQ. What must an amateur operator do when making on-air transmissions to test equipment or antennas? All right, this is a simple question. Whenever you go on or off the air, you must send your call sign. It's also polite to, to ask if the frequency is clear before you start testing your equipment so you're not interrupting another conversation. The answer to this one is to properly identify the transmitting station. Which of the following is true when making a test transmission? Of the possible answers, the correct one is station identification is required at least every 10 minutes during the test and at the end of the test. Now, so essentially a test transmission should be treated with regards to station identification um, just like any other communication. 
So if you're doing a test transmission, every 10 minutes during that transmission, you have to give your call sign, and then at the end of each transmission, you have to give your call sign. So it's no different than any other normal transmission. What is the meaning of the procedural signal CQ? It should sound familiar by now. CQ means calling any station. What brief statement is often used in place of CQ to indicate that you are listening on a repeater? The answer is simply just giving your call sign. Now, re repeaters are essentially shared transceivers, and so there's a lot of people tuned into those frequencies. So giving a CQ is really kind of excessive if you just want to have a conversation some with somebody. So in order to be efficient and effective on a repeater, if you want to have just a, a conversation with any available am amateur, all you really need to do is just give your call sign. What is a band plan beyond the privileges established by the FCC? All right, a band plan is a voluntary guideline for using different modes or activities within an amateur band, and it prevents a lot of hate and discontent among um, amateurs operating. If you remember the phrase voluntary guideline, you'll get the question correct. If you want to see an example of a band plan, I have a link at hamwhisperer.com. Which of the following is an FCC rule regarding power levels used in the amateur bands under normal, non-distress circumstances? Well, the possible answer is the correct one is, while not exceeding the minimum power permitted on a given band, use the minimum power necessary to carry out the desired communication. Now, what this means is that if even if the band allocation or the, the band you're working on has a maximum power level of 200 watts that you're allowed to use, if the communication you want to conduct it can be done with 5 watts, the maximum amount of power you're, you should use is 5 watts. So you want to use the minimum amount of power necessary to carry out the communication. So you don't have to overdo it by doing a thousand watts to uh, talk to a guy across the street. Um, you can only use a few watts to do the communication, only use a few watts to, to do the communication. So while not exceeding the maximum power permitted on a band, use the minimum amount of power necessary to carry out the, carry out the desired communication. Which of the following is a guideline to use when choosing an operating frequency for calling CQ? Now there are three things you need to do, and this is an all of the above question on the exam. But the first thing you want to do is make sure that the frequency you're wanting to transmit on is within your license privileges. The second thing you want to do is listen to that frequency to make sure you don't hear any other communication, so you're not going to interfere with any other communication. And then the third, you want to transmit and ask if the frequency is in use. So essentially, transmit and say, hey, is the frequency in use? This is KE4GKP. And if it is, somebody will, will get back to you and say, hey, we're using the frequency. What you're trying to avoid is you're trying to avoid stepping on somebody, other's, somebody else's communication or interfering with another station. So whenever you, before you call CQ, make sure that the frequency is within your privileges, listen to see if you hear a conversation, and then transmit and ask to see if the, the frequency is in use. And that's it for the T2A review, and now it's time for the quiz. So take out a pencil and paper, number 1 through 12. I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick, so if you need more time, simply pause the video and take all the time you need. When you're done with the quiz, you can go to hamwhisper.com, click on the exam answers page, and the, click on the link to the T2A quiz, or T2A section, and you can get the answers to the quiz there. All right, with all that, let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. What is the most common repeater frequency offset in the 2-meter band? A, plus 500 kilohertz, B, plus or minus 600 kilohertz, C, minus 500 kilohertz, or D, only plus 600 kilohertz. Question two, what is the national calling frequency for FM simplex operations in the 70 centimeter band? A, 146.52 megahertz, B, 145 megahertz, C, 432.1 megahertz, or D, 446 megahertz. Question three, what is a common repeater frequency offset in the 70 centimeter band? A, plus or minus 5 megahertz, B, plus or minus 600 kilohertz, C, minus 600 kilohertz, or D, plus 600 kilohertz. Question 4. What is an appropriate way to call another station on a repeater if you know the other station's call sign? A, say break break, then say the station's call sign. B, say the station's call sign, then identify with your call sign. C, say CQ three times, then the other station's call sign, or D, wait for the station to call CQ, then answer it. Question 5. How should you respond to a station calling CQ? A. Transmit CQ followed by the other station's call sign. B. Transmit your call sign followed by the other station's call sign. 
C. Transmit the other station's call sign followed by your call sign. Or D. Transmit a single signal report followed by your call sign. Question 6. What must an amateur operator do when making on-air transmissions to test equipment or antennas? A. Properly identify the transmitting station. B. Make test transmissions only after 10 p.m. local time. C. Notify the FCC of the test transmission. Or D. State the purpose of the test during the test procedure. Question 7. Which of the following is true when making a test transmission? A. Station identification is not required if the transmission is less than 15 seconds. B. Station identification is not required if the transmission is less than 1 watt. C. Station identification is only required once an hour when the transmissions are for test purposes only. Or D. Station identification is required at least every 10 minutes during the test and at the end of the test. Question 8. What is the meaning of the procedural signal, CQ? A. Call in the quarter hour. B. A new antenna is being tested. No station should answer. C. Only the called station should transmit. D. Calling any station. Question 9. What brief statement is often transmitted in place of CQ to indicate that you are listening on a repeater? A. The words, hello test, followed by your call sign. B. Your call sign. C. The repeater call sign, followed by your call sign or D, the letters QSY, followed by your call sign. Question 10. What is a band plan beyond the privileges established by the FCC? A, a voluntary guideline for using different modes or activities within an amateur band. B, a mandated list of operating schedules. C, a list of scheduled net frequencies. Or D, a plan devised by a club to use a frequency band during a contest. Question 11. Which of the following is an FCC rule regarding power levels used in the amateur bands under normal, non-distress circumstances? A. There is no limit to power as long as there is no interference with other services. B. No more than 200 watts PEP may be used. C. Up to 1500 watts PEP may be used on any amateur frequency without restriction. Or D. While not exceeding your maximum power permitted on a given band, use the minimum power necessary to carry out the desired communication. Question 12. Which of the following is a guideline to use when choosing an operating frequency for calling CQ? A. Listen first to be sure that no one else is using the frequency. B. Ask if the frequency is in use. C. Make sure you are in your assigned band. Or D. All of these choices are correct. And that concludes the T2A quiz. Now that you're done, go to hamwhisper.com, click on the exam answers page, and check your answers under the T2A link. And until next time, and Lesson 8, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.